Winter Farmer's Market is one of those gems you find in communities all over Maine. A place to meet up for sweet treats, hot drinks, and vendors selling just what your family needs. On Sunday, November 22nd, BCTV stopped by the first farmer's market of the season. We found dedicated vendors selling beautiful vegetables, meats, and handcrafted items. Between customers, BCTV asked the vendors how COVID has impacted their farm or business. Here is what we found. Nelson Vegan Farm, you know, we'd make our own stuff right at our house. We got our own trees. We make our wreaths. Not yet. No? Not yet, because basically we're outside doing all our work, so it's, it's not too bad. And what's the largest change you've made to the business due to COVID? Anything? Not really, nothing yet. I mean, holidays, once Christmas starts, then we'll start wearing our masks more often and stuff like that. But as far as basic, not, nothing much really. We did have a lot more. It's been a good year for selling Reese this year. Yeah, we do boat to table. Yeah, boat to table. That's boat to great. table. And how's business? Business has been great. Really? Um, we go? we started this when COVID hit in March, mm -hmm. and my husband was trying to sell fish to the auctions as he as he's been doing for years, and then um, you know the auctions stopped and the markets to the restaurants stopped, so we decided to take the fish straight to the people. So what we did is my sister-in-law designed a website and you can buy all of our fish online and pick from one of our six pickup locations. And then at our locations, um, the people pull up and some people will text us and we put it right in their trunk and away they go. So it's a lot of it's contactless, but we've definitely taken out all the middle people in the supermarket so you can go straight from the boat to the table. I'm just wondering, has it impacted your business? Uh, you said you've been doing very well. I take our, it it may have the opposite effect. Our whole business was founded because of COVID. So our primary business, my husband's a commercial fisherman, so all that fish went, was nobody was buying it. So we had to find another avenue to sell it in. So we designed an, our website so that you could just pick up fish that you pre-ordered without having to go into the supermarkets or having to come in contact with anybody. So you can show up at one of our six markets, pick it up um, at a table like this. You can buy extra if you want to, or you can just have us put it in your car and you don't have to come in contact with anyone. Um, I think the greatest challenge with what we're doing is we're, we're going to be outside all winter um, at the different markets we're at so that people don't have to go inside. I, at the six locations I'm at, we're planning on doing through the winter. We're here, we're uh, in Berwick, we're at the Hackham Attack. Yes. Um, we're in Portsmouth at the Question Brewery. And then we're in Dover um, with Heron, we partnered with Heron Pond Farm. They have a CSA program there. And then we have another one in um, Southampton in Newfield. And then we're also at Vernon Family Farm. Where's that? Um, Vernon Family Farm is just outside of Exeter. That's the Newfield location, that, now that I think about it. And then we're also at um, Lull Farm in Hollis. Right now, you just get on our website, thedailyhall.com. Yeah. It'll prompt you one time for your email address. You put your email address in, and then we send you a menu of what we expect to catch every week. And then... You, when you go on to buy fish, you choose Hackam Attack as your pickup location. I see. And then you can just order all the fish you want. When you get to Hackam Attack on Saturdays, um, you go in, you tell them you're picking up for the daily haul, and you give them your name, and they pull your bag, and it's all ready to go. Excellent. Thank yeah. You.
I'm Liz McGranigan and I'm the market manager for the Berwick Winters Farmers Market. In the spring, um, we had to cancel our last market, which was in April, unfortunately, because it was at the very beginning of uh, the, when the pandemic hit. And so there was a lot of uncertainty at that time about what was safe and what wasn't. And because we were an indoor market, we just felt as though that it would be safer for the public at that time to, to cancel. But um, we were really happy when uh, the season started this year that we were able to work with the Knowlton School and um, have them agree to let us have the market outdoors um, for the November and December market. Um, and then January through April we'll be returning to the town hall inside. And originally we were going to be inside the gym, but as cases started surging in our area, um, we really felt as though it was going to be safer for the public to move our market outdoors, uh, which also enables all of our wonderful farmers and producers to still have an outlet for them to be able to uh, sell some of the goods that they're making. My name is Joseph Sanborn from Sanborn Hope Farm, Rochester, New Hampshire. Um, we're located at we're located at 36 Peasley Road. We're open on the weekends during the winter, but if anybody calls, we'll certainly open up yep. to try to help them. Um, how has COVID impacted your business? I hate to say this, but it actually impacted it in a kind of a, a positive way. Uh, people were. <laughs> A lot more interested in coming to a farm to buy their product than going to a grocery store where things were a lot more crowded. But at the same time, it got to the point where we had a hard time keeping up with the beef and the pork, so we kind of had to limit what we were selling to individuals. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was not uncommon for people to show up and want to buy everything that we had. The largest change uh, involving the COVID situation was trying to get customers to comply with making sure they kept a safe distance and wear their masks, that type of thing. Give us a chance to make sure we can take care of what they need while we're keeping everybody safe. Uh, we do pumpkin hay rides in the fall and this year we did them with families only. Uh, not, I should say, families in groups that were all together all the time so we weren't putting mixed bunches of people on the hay wagon all at the same time. Uh, and everybody was fantastic about that. Nobody gave us any complaints, but it's just a matter of people being patient and, and letting us do what we have to do. My name is Alex. I'm Elizabeth. And we're through the Forest Mushroom Farm. Where are you located? Gora, Maine. What impact has COVID had on your uh, your business? Well, it's been tough with farmers markets um, and restaurant sales getting enough enough customers at you know, this time. Um, we're hopeful. We're hopeful that um, you know we'll, we'll continue to be able to, to provide our products and. Uh, we're always remaining optimistic. What's the largest challenge that you've had to meet during this period of time? Watermelon radish, okay. and then the purple daikon. Being able to diversify our market, I would say. Um, just, you know, there's a lot of uh, precautions being taken. Um, but again, we're, we're doing what we can. I think in order to succeed, um, we need to really focus on, on marketing, um, show people that we're taking it seriously, that we're, we're keeping clean processes, um, really just diversifying and, and reaching out as much as we can.
What's your name, please? Alyssa. It, like this. Yep. A-L-Y-S-S-A. -S yep. Patera, is that how you say it? Yep. And I heard you say you live in Bucksport? Buxton. Buxton, and yep. you work out of Portland. Yep. Mainly. What brings you down to Berwick today? Do you travel to all the farmers? I do a lot of different farmers markets. The Kennebunk one just ended yes yesterday. Yeah. Scarborough ended last month sometime. Um, and a lot of the farmers markets, like the good ones for the winter time, are not accepting new vendors this year. And you're so, a new vendor. This is your first year. This is my first one at Berwick. And then there was also um, I I wanted to apply to some of the bigger ones up north, like north of Portland, but they're not accepting new vendors. So. I, uh, I'm just, just doing this one, yes. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. What kind of products do you have here? So I uh, have kind of a split business. So the over here I have pumpkin seed milk, which I call pepita milk. Um, and it's made from organic, locally grown pumpkin seeds. And I make a byproduct from that, this a gluten-free um, flour and a protein powder. And then I also have a gluten-free pie crust mix and a tempura and a pancake mix down there. And then this is my other side of my business where I have an herbal skincare line, skin and body care. And I have things from like face exfoliators to moisturizers. I have all different kinds of lotions, including a CBD cream. And then I have hair texturizers and a tooth powder. I have to ask, what do you use pumpkin seed milk for? You can use it across the board, the same as you would use um, regular dairy milk or an alternative milk. It has a comparable flavor to almond milk, I would say, because it's mild and nutty, but you, it's just as versatile, but it's actually a much more sustainable option over almond milk. First of all, how long have you been in business in, in Portland? I So I started in New Hampshire, okay. um, and then I just moved to uh, Buxton, Maine in April. So I've been working out of Portland since then. Um, but I've been in business for almost two years. Is it a full-time job for you? Full-time job. Okay. Um, yeah. Has COVID impacted your business? Um, like I said, the, the market's not accepting new vendors for the winter is definitely um, going to prove some challenges. Um, it's definitely affected my expansion in Maine because moving up there when the pandemic started, I just like couldn't really do any networking. Um, so that's been a little bit challenging, but um, definitely worked through it. Uh, it boosted my sales at the beginning, even when the farmer's market shut down. And then as farmer's markets began to open back up, I just shifted gears again. Had a really good season though. Excellent. Um, but definitely with like the up in the airness with cafes and health food stores and all of that, like which is where I want to get my products into, it's been a little bit more challenging. Is there anything that needs to happen short term or long term for your business to, to really take off and thrive? Uh, um, <laughs> I need glass back. <laughs> <laughs> the glass shortage is really challenging right now. I just can't even go market because I don't have enough glass to package my products in. I didn't know there was a glass there shortage. There is a glass shortage and it's as you see everything is in glass. I don't do plastic so I'm struggling through that. I do a bottle deposit system luckily so that gets me enough jars to work with. But. Planning for this season's market has been um, a lot more, there's been a lot more details involved, obviously. <laughs> um, so there, the state of Maine um, deemed fortunately that farmers markets are essential. Um, so just like it's okay for us to go to the grocery store and shop, it's okay for us to shop here at a market. So we, the normal planning of the markets is uh, usually involved, I work with a great team of um, four, five other women um, that help put all these details together. But <clears throat> this, this year we're faced with some more challenges because of the pa uh, pandemic. So as you work your way through the market, you'll see that we have a one-way pattern of traffic, uh, one-way traffic flow. Um, people should try to stay at least six feet away from one another. Our vendors are set up so that they're spread out at least six feet apart. Um, we have hand sanitizing stations for the public to use. 
Uh, all of our vendors have hand sanitizer with them. Of course, our masks are very important in keeping us safe during this time, and so they are mandatory, um, which not only just for this market, but in the state of Maine now, too. Um, so there was a lot more of a planning logistically to see how we were going to handle all of, all of this crowd and as you can see all the signs around. <laughs> sure, um, we want to invite everyone to come to our December through uh, April markets. Um, you know, feeling safe I think is something very personal. Um, but we are doing what we can to keep everybody safe uh, by masks and social distancing and everything we've talked about. So, um, you know, as long as we feel as though uh, it's, it's reasonable to, to have the markets, then we will. Um, so come on out and enjoy and uh, come shop with our local farmers who work so hard all year. Uh, to bring you fresh and healthy and local food and come out and enjoy some community while you're while you're out. <laughs>
like I said, probably the best year I've ever had by quite a bit. Well, I do it by categories. So just for my best selling, I have four different categories the way I look at my stuff on my table. I have the pastry category, my best sellers are the turnovers. In the cookie category, my best seller is the chocolate chip. In the breads, the best seller is the pumpkin pecan. And in the pies, my wild maine blueberry is the best seller. My, uh, my name is Doug Henning, uh, name of the business is Doug's Garden, and I live in uh, North Berwick and have my little mini farm there. Uh, Kovac has had an influence, but it, it suits my lifestyle. You will not find that answer for many people, but Kovac because I enjoy the farming aspect of being just independent, left alone, and solving the world's problems, of course. And uh, so it doesn't affect my daily situation. bake out of my home now in Old Orchard. Um, I used to bake out of a commercial kitchen in Portland. Um, Did COVID change all that? Um, yes and no. I was looking to, um, the rent was, um, the overhead was just got to be too much. Um, so uh, I was able to um, get my condo um, kitchen um, licensed by How the nice. state. Yeah. And what do you make here, Renee? I make uh, ham pies um, entirely from scratch. Um, they follow the seasons. So like right now, I've got some Thanksgiving flavors. I've got like maple pumpkin, ginger apple cranberry, pecan with Maine bourbon. Um, but I also do some traditional favorites like apple and Maine blueberry. Then I also do um, some sidekicks like lemon. Um, that's a very popular one. I also do uh, seasonal ones like a spice pear or a spice plum. That's what I have right now. Um, some fun ones like caramel apple. I also have done in the past like a peanut butter and conquer grape jam um, it's you know when great we had a really good um, bumper crop for grapes actually my folks did I picked their grape patch and made some grape um, grape jelly and did the PB and J um, flavor uh -huh. so that was fun it's kind of like the, oh, the kid in all of us you know and, <laughs> and uh, that was my first flavor to sell that I did that at my last Scarborough farmers market and that's where I was um, over the summer and uh, early fall Bro, um are these going for Thanksgiving? Are people buying them up as a side dish or a dessert dish? Yeah, um, and they're, they're buying the flights um, and they're buying like for themselves or for like their parents and like one customer came by and said, I'm just gonna like put these at my mom's door, you know, and then she'll have, you know, a, you know, a Thanksgiving uh, dessert flight of hand pies. What's a flight? Uh, a flight, I sell uh, flights of three, um, I, I like, in, individually priced like the by the each and then uh if people want to buy like three they get like a little um they get kind of a deal um and then also because i have so many flavors that um people were i was unintentionally overwhelming customers um with the choice and then when they have the fly they're like oh i can pick three now and yeah you know get a little bit of a better price point there i wouldn't mind finding so. a flight at my door that would be fantastic. yeah um, this, that was inspired by the breweries <laughs> Um, may I ask you some questions about COVID? I'm just wondering, has it affected your business? Um, the COVID time was when I was actually, um, I was, was no longer baking in my commercial, in the commercial kitchen and looking to get my home kitchen certified. And I was using that time to do that. And I was, I also uh, work a quote unquote real job at a hospital too. So that's, um, so when I was kind of quote unquote closed just to figure out where I was going to be landing. Um, and then by the time uh, the farmer's markets came back in the summer, I was ready in time for that. And I was able to start again at the Scarborough market.
Moving on with COVID, I'm just wondering if you've, you said you've made changes to your business by moving to your house. Have you made any other changes? Um, just by the way, um, just the way we do the markets in general, you yeah. know, um, outdoors and you know, distancing and everything. Um, I've always had prepackaged hand pies, so that's, you know, and so I find that's already, you know, worked out for, you know, COVID or pre-COVID. So I kind of already had that plan in place. Um, so that's worked out well. Uh, I've always had the, like the contactless, you know, payment, like if people want to do square. Um, you know, and some people still feel safe doing cash, but like I have an extra box if people just want to, want to put cash there and don't want any contact, you know, with like cash I might have touched. So, you know, Will you just, be outside all winter at these markets? Um, as long as they want to stay outside, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I might have to do a s'mores flavor so people can think of campfires. <laughs> um, have you been able to take advantage of any of the relief funds for COVID or anything else being offered? Um, I haven't. Um, luckily, uh, biggest change for me in terms of like, relief is just been able to not pay that big rent, you know, that overhead. Um, that's been a huge help, just being able to just bring my business to my home. Yeah, thank you, Renee. Just one more question. Is there anything that if you could snap your fingers to, to survive better this COVID season or to thrive going forward, is there anything that you'd like to see? Um, just the vaccine, you know, yeah. um, it's, kind of, it's kind of the light at the end of the tunnel. And once we're all vaccinated, I think that'll kind of, you know, get us back to whatever that new normal is going to look like and uh, people will feel safe. I feel very fortunate that things can be done like markets um, in a safe way and that it doesn't have to be like yes or no it can't you know it can be done it can't be done like yes it can be done and we can do so safely um, so just being able to um, work with the changes um, that have come with you know with with COVID <laughs> well thank you Renee and good luck thank with you. your business it thank you fantastic. very much I appreciate it yeah well thanks for talking with me today Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Um, if everyone wants to come and round out the holidays, it's going to be that magic time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, so um, feel free to come by with your recipes or your food list or whatever and pick up some great ingredients and some uh, prepared items as well for your table. Valier. I'm Cassie Peralt's mother from Cassie's Canning Cabinet and I'm just volunteering today to, to help Cassie out because she couldn't be here today. Cassie's Canning Cabinet. I'll give it a shot. Where does she work out of it? Out of Berwick? Or? Yes, she's right here in Berwick. She works out of her home. I was going to put it down here. Yeah, they put that together pretty quick and they're just a great group of, of vendors that, you know, because of necessity that they had no place to sell their goods. Yeah. So I'm wondering, on School Street, are there uh, specific hours that she's there? With the no, no, my dad just um, rolls the cart out when the sun is shining, and, and, and it will be closing up after Thanksgiving. So it was just, you know, a little bit to try to subsidize, you know, the losses this year. But um, that has been like one of the biggest impacts is, is the glass shortage. Um, she has been able to, you know, scrape some up and, and get by, but... But yeah, it was like definitely difficulties, um, you know, and like the jam um, jars we had completely run out of for a while. What kind of things does she make? It looks like she makes lots of products from salsa, jellies, jams, uh, pickles, dill pickles, hot garlic pickles, bread and butter, pick lily, all your relishes. She's out. It sold out of pickle beets today and zucchini relish, jelly beans, crushed tomatoes. She, um, she has a lot of, lot of great products, really. Uh, the one that is her best seller is not here. It's the hot garlic pickles, I believe, are the best seller. Um, 
I would say that is, yeah, that's definitely her, her best seller. Yeah, other than the, the jar shortage, how has COVID affected Well, you? I mean, Cassie is a mother of three boys and she also has a foster daughter, so she's, you know, she's homeschooling, so, you know, so she has to deal with, with that. But also, um, the inability for like the outdoor markets. So a lot of a group of vendors actually got together and they um, they started this new Tri Town Farmers Market, which is at Sturgeon Creek, and that is like a vendor-based market because there's not indoor locations, and pretty soon the weather is not going to permit these these outdoor markets. So so they're doing what they can. To that I hand formulate and craft myself. Um, I grow as many of the plants that I use as I can. Um, yeah, so everything is plant-based herbal products. Soaps, salves, oils, sprays. I um, do not sell out of my home. I craft everything at my home and my primary um, source of engaging with my customers is through farmer's markets and through my website. What's the name of your business? Two Toad Farm. <laughs> T W O T O A D. You got it. And where's that? It's in Springvale, Maine. Springvale, Maine. You've been in business for a while? This is our 13th year farming full time. Mary Beth, what kind of products do you have at your farm? Um, we are mostly a vegetable farm. Um, we grow over 200 varieties of vegetables. Um, we also do chicken and eggs and certified organic lamb. You have the lamb right on your property? We do. Yep. Oh, excellent. And yep. Um, how's business been? It's been awesome. It's been awesome. Are you um, coming to all the farmers markets? Is this, uh, will you, and will you be going throughout the winter? Yes. We do a lot of storage crops um, and the lamb. So we have a lot of stuff to sell um, in the winter. Eggs, meat, and vegetables. Has it affected your business? It definitely has affected our business. Um, oddly enough, it seems like at the beginning it tended to help our business a lot. It seemed like the interest in local food um, blossomed at the beginning of the pandemic because people realized how unstable the industrial food system is and how a pandemic like this could easily shut down the supply chains. So in you know the early spring, we would open our farm stand and we would have people waiting 45 minutes in line to get vegetables. And we would sell everything that we had every week. So it's amazing. Um, it seems the same as happening with the farmers markets this summer, where people felt a lot safer going outside and doing their shopping and not going to grocery stores. Um, so the farmers market attendance was also very great this summer. So I hate to see a bright side of a pandemic, but it's definitely helped local farmers. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, um, I'm the manager of the Sanford Farmers Market and, you know, convincing, first of all, convincing the town to let you open during a pandemic um, was difficult. I mean, there's a lot of fear. So, and learning, I mean, learning how to run a market safely during a pandemic has, has been a challenge. Kind of training the public on how to adhere to new protocols was a challenge. You know, not people, especially in a farmer's market, people, part of the attraction is being able to come and touch the vegetables and pick out the stuff you like. And it's part of the fun. I mean, I know people do that in the grocery store too, but for some reason at the farmer's market, the stuff is so fresh and there's so many things you don't see at the grocery store. So not being able to touch the produce has um, hurt a little bit. Um, same thing with our farm stand. Our farm stand is very small, so we don't allow people into the farm stand anymore, which we used to. Um, we do all out the window, so it's very hard where people can't see up close the vegetables that they're buying. So um, 
training people to come and not touch and look and let us, you know, model the vegetables, you know. How does this one look, you know? <laughs> um, and, you know, to wait in line and, and wear masks. Um, it was very nerve wracking at first, but people seemed to pick up the protocols really quickly and be very respectful and we haven't had any problems. This is my full-time business. Have yep. you been able to get any relief funds or any other help during COVID? Um, we haven't applied for any yet. Um, we are working to get some drought relief fund, which affected us a lot more negatively than the pandemic, actually. Yeah. Yeah, very dry summer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is there anything that you need other than the water for the, for the drought relief or, uh, to thrive or to survive going full? Um, more people coming out to the farmers markets um, and realizing that this is really an awesome, safe alternative to going to a grocery store. Um, and yeah, always more people at the market. This is celeriac or celery root. If you can imagine um, celery and potato having a baby, so it has the beautiful, sweet fragrance of celery, but it starts you like a potato. So you can chop it up and roast it like a potato. Um, fry it with your home fries, add it to your soups. Um, the scent is heavenly, so one of my favorite vegetables.